As you may notice on my channel, I'm a big fan of the new scriptable render pipeline because we are now able to create beautiful effects like this one. So a blood effect. Or I could even switch and say, okay, I want a sepia effect. A little bit like maybe this one. There we go, beautiful sepia effect. Or uh, just, just a black and white effect. It's also possible or just get back to normal just with a few clicks and you can even um, do the clicks in the script itself so depending on your game situation for example if you are low on health just activate your uh, post processing and there we go so and i will show you how you can create your own post processing effects from scratch in unity it's absolutely beautiful let's start when you're creating a new project, you can set the template to light white render pipeline and your outcome is a scene like this. You can delete the example assets, but I will leave them in because you will see the effects a little bit better. So Unity published a page on GitHub where they explain how you can create the custom effects. It's a lot of text and you love video, so let's do this in this video. But the link is down there in the description so that you can have a look and maybe copy and paste the script for example i will do it for this code listing here let's create a c char script and we will name this color effect and we will edit this okay get rid of everything paste in your script or just type it as you see it here right now uh, we will have to change a little bit so color effect is this class we will use and we will rename everything that's called grayscale to color effect. And here we are again, color effect, color effect, color effect. So, and here we go, uh, color effect, intensity. Okay, what is it? I have to explain this and we have to change this as well. So it's a serializable class. It has to be serializable. And here you have the color effect. This is the post process effect settings. And you have the post process effect renderer. So two different classes here in one file. This is completely possible. This is the thing you will see right here. So basically the editor settings, which um, of these components uh, you are able to see and the other class here down here will do the real render. Okay, uh, we want some parameters. So here is a blend parameter, but I will have some other parameters as well. So just type in parameter and you see which parameters are there. Float parameters, grading mode, color, bool, texture parameters, everything is there. Uh, we will start with a color parameter effect color it's a new color parameter and you can give it a default value um, I will give it the value white and a second float parameter as well um, and I will call this intensity of course you always have to set value and these are public public things here and you're directly able to go to custom color effect and add your color effect and you should see these attributes right now. Why is it custom color effects in the menu? Yes, it's because you specify it here. And here you say, when do you want to um, make this effect happen? You have even a parameter if you say, if you want to see the effect in screen view or only in game view, default is both, so we will leave it like that. Now we have to pass these values to the shader. The shader is here, hidden custom color effect. We didn't create the shader yet. We will uh, create it in a minute. But first let's pass our uh, variables to the script. So we will set two colors and a float. So the float, it's just a sheet property set float blend. This is the name in the shader and this is the name in the settings. The settings, um, is a variable f of the type color effect so you can uh, access all your parameters here for example the intensity or the effect color 
and we will rename this here effect color and here it's uh, intensity the intensity has to be a color i will explain uh, in a few seconds why um but it's a hsv color and the hue is zero the saturation is zero and the value should be the intensity that's why it's a float parameter here and i will pass it as a color to our shader so that's completely possible you could even have some code here that um, does something with these values this is all one uh, during the game and the sheet comes from here you just say okay context property sheets find my shader so and this is why i choose this shader and then you say context command blit full screen triangle you just say uh, just use this sheet and render a full screen image okay as soon as you go into unity um, arrows will start to appear because we are in scene mode uh, it wants to have the shader or access the shader but the shader is not there so let's create the shader create a folder uh, resources this has to be a resources folder it doesn't have to be on the root just anywhere in your, the project because as soon as you compile or make it a real game uh, the shader has to be exported and it's not referenced except um, of the script okay let's create a shader we can't use the pbr graph or the graph uh, itself unfortunately so we have to make a uh, standard surface shader just name the shader uh, color effect and there we go this is our shader that is generated uh, I will just delete it <laughs> go back to this beautiful github page and copy and paste the shader code we will see here okay I'm completely honest with you I'm not a shader developer I never developed a shader before but my knowledge is enough to just develop the shader I wanted. So, um, and I know this is the name of the shader and it has to match this here, uh, the name we are looking for. So we rename the shader, color effect. So then we include this standard library for post-processing and then magically there are some variables. So you can go to GitHub and uh, see what's in there then you know a little bit more about the variables but i can't read shader code so it doesn't make any sense for me um here is a declaration of some variables we have a float and i know that the float 4 is the same as the color so i will declare float 4 we need a color for the intensity and we need a second float for color for the effect color so you can declare as many variables you want here and then there is this frag method that is executed for every frame. Input is input texture, main texture and output is a color for the pixel. Uh, I don't know what this is doing. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. It's there. It works. We will leave it like that. Okay, so um, we will get some information I. Unfortunately, no autocomplete is available here. But uh, we know that the texture coordinate is coming and the main texture is coming and we just get the color of the pixel. So this is called for every pixel on the screen. And here is a luminance, which is just how um, bright the current pixel is. We won't use this float 3 here. We will make a dot product of the current RGBs. This is a vector 3 of the color and the intensity uh, RGB and this is um, the color we are using and um, which we have created in our script and this variable holds now the information how bright our current pixel is you can uh, create a float so a vector 3 out of a float just type triple x behind it and now this is a vector 3 with three times the same value here you see blend does the same thing and the output color uh, will be modified 
so it will be linear interpolated. We use this node a lot in the shader graph tutorials. Just look at any shader graph tutorial out there. This node is always used. So linear, linear interpolation input to colors and then one value that says use either this color or this color. And this we will do with blend value. We can um, leave it like that. The only thing that we will add is the effect color. And if you want to add a color or give an image a specific color, you can either add the color or multiply the color. There are many operations. We will multiply it with a luminance. So this is our effect image. This is the original, uh, original image and we will blend between those. There we go. You would see any errors here. For example, if we type something that doesn't make sense, you will see the errors here. No errors here directly. This is how you develop a shader. I don't like it, but our script is not that long. I can deal with it. So post-processing volume, here's our color effect. Here are the values and you already can see the effect is working. So the blend is working, the effect color is working. So for example, take a red color for the blood effect and the intensity is also working black or very white. So maybe intensity isn't the right thing, but I called it that way. So this looks very good. Um, if you have a look down in the description, there is a depth of field uh, asset store link. And this is a script I wrote for myself. Maybe I make a video in the future. Uh, uh, sorry, a texture overlay. Uh, this is the one I wanted to mention. And the texture overlay just takes texture, for example, this blood texture and overlays it. So um, I have written it in a way that this is only viewable in game mode, but this is what it looks like. So it's really, now it's red and intense, maybe not that intense. So here we are, here we go. We got our blood effect completely written by ourselves. Um, completely genius and uh, sapier effect in a few clicks, black and white effect in a few clicks, um, intensity completely customizable. So this is how you can create your own post-processing effect. Subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials.